Chapter 15 of the Bhagavad Gita. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Shubda Garani. The Bhagavad Gita, translated by Sir Edwin Arnold. Chapter 15 of religion by attaining the supreme krishna men call the ashvatha the banyan tree which hath its boughs beneath its roots on high the ever holy tree yea for its leaves are green and waving hymns which whisper truth who knoweth well the ashvatha knows all its branches shoot to heaven and sink to earth even as the deeds of men which take their birth from qualities its silver sprays and blooms and all the eager verdure of its girth leap to quick life at touch of sun and air as men's lives quicken to the tempting sphere of wooing sense its hanging rootlets seek the soil beneath helping to hold it there as actions wrought amid this world of men bind them by ever tightening bonds again if ye knew well the teaching of the tree what its shape saith and whence it springs and then how it must end and all the ills of it the axe of sharp detachment ye would wet and cleave the clinging snaky roots and lay this ashwatha of sense like low to set new growths upspringing to that happier sky which they who reach shall have no day to die nor fade away nor fall to him i mean father and first who made the mystery of old creation for to him come they from passion and from dreams who break away who part the bonds constraining them to flesh and him the highest worshipping away no longer grow at mercy of what breeze of summer pleasure stirs the sleeping trees what blast of tempest tears them bow and stem to the eternal world pass such as these another sun gleams there another moon another light a light which none shall lack whose eyes once see for those return no more they have attained my uttermost abode when in this world of manifested life the undying spirit setting forth from me taketh on form it draweth to itself from being's storehouse which containeth all senses and intellect the sovereign soul thus entering the flesh or quitting it gathers these up as the wind gathers scents blowing above the flower banks ear and eye and touch and taste and smelling these it takes yeah and a sentient mind linking itself to sense thinks so the unenlightened ones mark not that spirit when he goes or comes nor when he takes his pleasure in the form conjoined with qualities but those see plain who have the eyes to see holy souls see which strive thereto enlightened they behold that spirit in themselves but foolish ones even though they strive discern not having hearts unkindled ill-informed no too from me shineth the gathered glory of the sun which lightens all the world from me the moon draws silvery beams and fire fierce loveliness i penetrate the clay and lend all shapes their living force i glide into the plant its root leaf bloom to make the woodland green with springing sap becoming vital warmth i glow in glad respiring frames and pass with outward and with inward breath
to feed the body with all meats. For in this world, being is twofold, the divided one, the undivided one. All things that live are the divided, that which sits apart, the undivided. Higher still is one, the highest, holding all whose name is Lord, the eternal, sovereign first, who fills all worlds, sustaining them, and dwelling thus beyond divided life and undivided. I am called of men and Vedas, God Supreme, the Purushottama, who knows me thus with mind unclouded, knoweth all, dear Prince, and with his whole soul ever worshippeth me. Now is the sacred secret mystery declared to thee, who comprehendeth this hath wisdom, he is quit of works in bliss. Here ends chapter 15 of the Bhagavad Gita entitled Purushottama Prapti Yoga or The Book of Religion by Attaining the Supreme.